Welcome back for part two of Andersonville's Juneteenth series. My name is Avery Clements and today I'm going to examine how Andersonville became a symbol of freedom, opportunity, and education. After the close of the prison in May of 1865, black labor continued to contribute vital work to the site, reconstructing the cemetery with Captain James Moore's expedition. Before his expedition arrived though, freed people had already begun occupying the site and making homes out of the abandoned buildings which existed here. Employment with the United States government afforded amazing new opportunities to freed people. This economic freedom allowed them to move away from the plantation lifestyle and actually encouraged people to move to Andersonville from miles away in, in search of these opportunities. It also allowed a early physical connection to the cemetery that so many people already felt a deep connection to and continued to foster that bond. And it all allowed some people to actually purchase lands which still remain in their families today, such as the English family farm, which is right next door to our park. Following a national trend for education, the Sumter School was established in 1866 in the old Confederate hospital and remained open until 1874 when the American Missionary Association eventually uh, rescinded their funding and support for this venture. The school offered both day and night classes. While many of the day classes were populated by female students, a lot of the night classes were more sought after by men who worked in the cemetery or people who felt threatened to attend school during the day. In the end, around 250 of the cemetery workers received an education at the Sumter School and some of these men went on to be community leaders here in Andersonville. On January 1, 1869, on the sixth anniversary of the Emancipation Proclamation, Andersonville held its first Emancipation Day celebration. The, uh, the celebrations began in the Freedmen's Chapel and included singing and reciting of both Scripture and the Emancipation Proclamation. The celebrations continued across into the prison and cemetery sites where they dedicated several wreaths and continued singing until they ended the day with a salute to the flag at the Andersonville train depot. Together the crowd marched, mourned, and sang before quietly returning to their regular lives. These Emancipation Day celebrations would serve as the foundation for Decoration Day, which would later become Memorial Day. The first Decoration Day was celebrated in Andersonville on April 27th of 1869. Having heard that people from America planned to come to the cemetery and decorate only the Confederate Guards' graves that were present there at the time, black children from the local Sumter School gathered with their teachers and decorated every grave in the cemetery with oak leaves and flowers early in the morning before sunrise. These celebratory events set a precedent of black participation in patriotic events here at Andersonville. Through the years, their participation would wax and wane as different organizations gained control of the former prison site and cemetery. However, it would never cease entirely. All of this and more provides a deep cultural connection between the local black community and Andersonville. In many ways, building Andersonville was a black experience, both during and after the Civil War. This left lasting impressions on the site, which can still be seen today. As is the case with many histories, you just have to know where to look. I hope this video series has provided you all a jumping point to do some research of your own and continue learning about our histories here at Andersonville. <laughs>